All right, everybody. Thanks for coming in. Got a little uh, whiskey net production here. We're going to get together with a bunch of dudes to try some Evan Williams. We're going to go through, do a little uh, budget battle, see what comes out being the best pour out of these. I think the most expensive one out of the whole lineup was 30 ish bucks, maybe 28. Uh, I don't know. Evan Single Barrel, I think, is a, what's that, like 19? Yeah, 19. 19. Um, I think the Evan Single Barrel I got was. 27 to 28 bucks is on sale. It's usually about 30 here in Maine. So somewhere in that range. So we're looking at like what's the cheap what's 1783? Like 15-ish bucks. 15, 15 bucks, 16. Yeah. So yeah, we're talking 15 to 30 bucks. I don't know how or why Evan Williams has so many products that are all 15 to 30 bucks. There's like what white label, black label, green label, 1783. There's a whole bunch of stuff that all falls within like three bucks of each other, but they're all pretty good products and uh, get a lot of damage done with just a couple of dollars. They're all pretty much the same proof too, I think, right? I think they're close. Between 43 and 50, yeah. Yeah. Or 40, if it's green, I think. It's green. Yeah, I think I've only had green. Well, I think Jordan sent me a sample of it. Or you know what? That might have been Heaven Hill Green Label. Jeez, I can't keep all these... Uh, under thirty dollar Heaven Hill product straight, I guess. They taste the same, so you're good. Oh come on! <laughs> <laughs> this will be an easy tasting. They're all the same. Yeah, this one wins. Which is it? All, yes, it's all dickle. It's all dickle. <laughs> okay, well we get that going for us. We have take with the ultimate mic setup. Yeah, I suppose that's about right. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's the most kind thing anybody has said about this mic setup. Nice. So I think the way we're going to taste through these, um, going to pull the whiskey cam in here for just a second. And we're going to go through black label, single barrel, white label, and then finally ending with 1783, just for everybody to check that out. So let's start going through these. We'll bring Mr. Eric back in. I'll put this old elk away and we'll start with this. So, Black Label. Jordan, you're up. What do you think? Are you into it yet? Nope. Are you already on a white label? <laughs> yeah, I'm done. I'm good. He's already done. He's finished all of his samples. He's uh, about ready to sign off for the night. Just Everybody follow Jordan. <laughs> So as we start going through these and digging in, uh, check in with you guys and see, did anybody have a warm up on something else? I know I'm sure Eric did. He always warms up there. He likes to uh, <laughs> calibrate the palate, so to speak. Yeah. Grinweller, uh, Grinweller warm up. Yeah, classic. Yeah, I had a little, a little Buffalo Trace earlier, but nothing too crazy. And water. Under, a, a water warm up. Okay. Likes to come in oh, fresh. Yeah. The habanero with dinner will kill me, but it won't be the buffalo trays. No, <laughs> you'll be fine. It was very mild then. Yeah. I actually, uh, I really calculated that tonight because I very frequently do something just like that and I'll go crush a ton of hot peppers or something. <laughs> or like, I've got a, like, it's like what amounts to a pepper grinder, but it's got a ghost pepper in it. So it's like a smoked ghost pepper grinder yeah. and put that on top of something and it's got killer flavor. But to do that just before diving into a, just before diving into a tasting, it's probably not ideal. Well, Leighton, it's, uh, we've been meaning to tell you, man. You, you didn't get the email. Your check did not arrive, so you've been... You've we been we didn't receive your payment ahead of time. <laughs> <laughs> or at least uh, our attorney told us that we didn't. Don't you put this on me. <laughs> <laughs> our Discord attorney. <laughs> We should be playing uh, Razzles right. versus whatever Patrick. the Patrick we, we killer. Razzles. Just what we need is more of that going on, right? <laughs> How is everybody in Discord not already broke, right? Because we're all just sending the money to each other. It's just an yeah. <laughs> it's just it's a snake eating its own tail at this point. <laughs> PayPal has the world's biggest laundering ring. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> the same seventeen guys. Yeah, there's only forty three thousand dollars in all of PayPal. <laughs> <laughs> and it just keeps going around. 
Probably. Oh, the black gets a bed. I wish I had some McKenna Brown label to put up next to this, just like to further diversify the overall cost. Because I mean, these just you're right. I mean, they are extremely similar. Take. I I think it'd be interesting if you if you diluted a Henry McKenna single barrel bottled in bond to the same proof as Brown label. I bet you nobody could tell the difference. That you could very well be right. <laughs> We're still on black label. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is a. Just sweet. Just I've been drinking a lot of craft stuff lately, and this is this is honestly pretty good compared to some of the stuff I've been having. Yeah, I kind of go through like this roller coaster ride of being into craft whiskey and like shuttling right back out of it, and then you drink it, and then you're back out. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I still it's believe a, the Bowman is craft whiskey. I don't care what you have to say, Dre. I don't. I don't you're know cut too. <laughs> you're, you're cut out of the group. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to double check that. Um, you wrote a loophole into the contracts, right? Uh, the benefits me absolutely. I'm. I always. Uh, I thought so. No matter what. Yeah. Yeah, it makes perfect sense now. That sounds it's like, like it's paper. like buying Lafitte and putting it in a plastic bag and selling it under Boda Box. <laughs> <laughs> uh, nobody knows what that means. There's like three people here who know what wine is. I think. Oh, okay. Boda Box. Is it's pretty good. It's I mean, pretty good for thirty dollars. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I like the uh, the Nighthawk or whatever the black one is. Like anything that's dark and jammy, I'm pretty into for wine. Mmm, jammy. Anyway, nice people that don't drink like a bottle a day because they'll last for a month without getting. Out. I mean, honestly, this black label, I, I like it. Yeah, it's all right. I feel it's like sweet, it's toasty. Be- it wants to be like caramelly and sweet, but it just doesn't quite get there. It's a little, I think bit, it's a little bit sweet and toasty. That's yeah. I, I actually get some tobacco on here, which I don't typically get out of Evan Williams, but. You get tobacco on the finish. I could see that, yeah. But yeah, with John, I'm with John with it's getting sweet and then just kind of falls off this tobacco spice. Yeah. Guy yeah, has all yeah. those plastic notes that you want. I mean, it. Yeah, three percent. It's not gonna. It's not gonna get you very far, but you know, it's got um, your typical kind of vanillas and caramels and everything like that. A little bit of oak, and and then I think yeah, there's a smoky finish to it, which is a nice touch on a, you know, something that you can buy in a plastic flask. Right. <laughs> I will admit this is one of the hotter forty-three percent ABV bourbons I've drank, at least on the finish. Yeah, it, it, car- it drinks in the mid nineties for sure. Yeah, it carries itself like pretty big. I don't dislike that about it, though. To be honest with you, it might actually be a little bit of a positive because otherwise, it was some buzzwords. It's it, it's very chuggable, very yeah. chuggable. <laughs> That's not That's a buzzword. Sessionable whiskey. <laughs> in what world is that a buzzword for whiskey? Yeah, well, I, mean, I mean, it ranks right up there with smooth. Oh, <laughs> really? Uh, I'm going to start countering that then. When people ask me if something is smooth, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to go ahead and say, well, you know what? You might call it smooth, but I think it's probably a little bit more chuggable. I would call it crushable or boatable. Oh, okay. Inflated tubable. I don't know. It's it's thin on the palate. Like it, it's got a really nice nose. It's yeah. Thin on the palate. It's a little hot on the finish. So like you know it's young, but like I don't know. It's competent. Like. Right. I, I mean, I wouldn't call it flawed. No, I would. I mean, I would say that's all day long. If you had to describe bourbon to somebody, and you couldn't use words, and you could just dangle that out there, be like, just have a, a quick smell of that. That's bourbon. yeah. Yeah. I'd yeah. say it's a little bit subpar, but like it's by no means bad. Um, right. I, I don't know that I'd say that it was good, but like, I don't know. You're making a cocktail. I think this would hold up just fine. And yeah, especially it, it is a little bit punchy for being whatever it is, 43%. And maybe punchy without killing all of your dinner guests in one cocktail isn't so bad. Right. Yeah, that's Gone one thing. Girl instead of this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Something that I end up running into is that, you know, we as whiskey nerds will be into barrel proof or you know high proof stuff especially higher proof things that might not drink to their proof and get really acclimated to that 
and then you have somebody who's not either into barrel proof or not into whiskey quite so much and you throw them a pour of something that's like even 115 proof and they're just like feeling like it's gasoline mm -hmm. yeah when you have something like this it's a lower abv and you put it into a cocktail it can kind of you know get the job done in more ways than one and i think that's kind of probably another another positive about it really it's overall a solid pour that checks a lot of boxes and does not hurt your wallet yeah i think the word that i would use is competent like there's nothing yeah, that's not I like competent. that like i mean i think that it would even fare pretty well in a blind spirits competition based on what most of the you know i mean it's not going to upseat some of the great stuff but well yeah there's no it, uh, notes there's no notes in it that are kind of off there's bad, nothing, yeah it's just right. everything is pretty straightforward and it's not going to, it doesn't have any surprises, but it's also not going to, you, know, you don't get any kind of like musty flavor or, you know, anything bitter Peanut. really. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. There's no flaws in there. It's just all, there might be more boxes that you would like to see checked off, but it's not like, holy shit, like this would be good if it didn't have that. You know what I'm saying? There's yeah. all, it's pretty even across the board. I could see why Fred would get away with saying that this is his baseline bourbon because he's going to score this in 82 and he can come back to that every time and be like okay yep this you yeah, know, yeah qualifies as the same thing almost every time it's super consistent nothing wild but it's still good when it walks the razor's edge between not great whiskey and like when you kind of tip into you know more expensive but like really good whiskey mm -hmm. like if that makes sense like like this is right up like if it was a little worse i'd say it, it wasn't so good and if it was a little bit better i'd say you know this was probably buffalo trace quality but you know it's kind of right on occam's razor yeah i think that makes sense all right you move up to um how are we doing next? That the simplest answer is usually the right answer we don't have to do we don't have to drill down into that it's okay <laughs> unless it's on the dmv driving test then it's the one with the most commas <laughs> yeah, so let's step up to uh, single barrel now. This is the, this is the uh, drunk driving by your house edition. Oh, that's okay. That's a big difference. Yeah. Goddamn. Woo. So mm. this particular barrel is. So I don't forget. Yeah, how old? Yeah. Ish. Eight ish. Like eight. Eight. What? Just under eight years uh barreled 81811 so this is the uh 2011 it's not going to come in focus here but 2011 uh bottled up on 615 19 wow so we are uh not too far off of the bottle date from last year wow i can get down with that but That's i mean like again we're talking 43.3 percent so not too far off oh this eric's coming back in here so probably double the age, 0.3% ABV higher. Yeah. Boy, does it tell. At least on the nose. I haven't drank it yet. But yeah. The nose is, um, the nose nose is a lot deeper. So I'm a little conflicted here, too, because this is only 19 bucks in Wisconsin. Yeah. I mean, if it was only 19 bucks here, man, I don't wow. know as I would buy too many other things that cost more than 19 bucks. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. I don't know what black label goes for here. I, I can't think it's too much, but wow, this is a rich nose. Yeah, kind of get a Very. toasted marshmallow off of it. Yeah, I was thinking like yeah. toasted almond, some some marshmallow. Yeah, I get a lot of honey out of this one too. In this barrel, yeah, I get a lot of honey. Get a little apple, like caramel apple. Yeah, I could see the caramel mm -hmm. apple. Yeah. The nose is just so much sweeter than the black label. Yeah, it is for sure. And that hint of mustiness from the black is just completely gone. Yeah. Yep. So we get a little bit of that, a tiny bit of that smoke in there, but I think it's like uh, Joel said, it's more like a toasted marshmallow than it is like char, you know. Yeah, wow, that's nice. So this barrel, uh, when it actually hit the liquor store here last year, last summer, I picked it up and was really pumped about it. And luckily, distribution here is so uh interesting that i could still go back and get bottles one. from this so it's almost like a store pick for me at this point like <laughs> I, know, I know it's great and i could just go back and get more because <laughs> you're the only person in maine i'm the only it. i'm the only bastard that's buying it i like it logan's giving you a shout out there kendrick 
Yeah, this. I mean, this is good. So I drank. I drank a lot of these around like the uh, the 2000, 2001, 2003 vintages, and then I kind of stopped because uh, you know, oh, 43 percent, man, you know. But uh, right. even now, I, I'd cons- I, and then I kind of stopped buying it because I was like, oh, now it's just super, super young, you know. But uh, for 19 bucks, I, this this might be unbeatable. I think um, it's like 27 here, actually. Wow. Yeah, that's what even, it is. Even then, I think under 30. And- I would still, yeah. The big problem is that is Buffalo Trace is like actually available here, and it's like twenty three dollars. So that I get that that's atypical. That like yeah. makes it really hard to to try and go up in those thirties. But yeah, so yeah, this is nice. I feel like this is you turned up the sweetness and that caramel and vanilla on the black, and turned down the bitterness and the finish. Yeah, yeah, like just took the volume uh, on the good notes and just kind of cranked it up a little bit. Yep. Yeah, it's it's definitely a lot richer, especially on the finish. Yeah, the finish is kind of this much longer, warmer, um, richer flavor than than you had with the black. That just kind of like, all right, that, you know, I drank that; it's gone now. Yeah, that gives you some oak structure. Yeah, that's a good way to word it. Good structure on that. I mean, the legs on it are exponentially better too. I mean, this really, I mean, this carries itself like a, a, a more than $19 bourbon, I would say. Not that yeah, it costs well, 19 is, but still, I mean. It may, at, be typical, um, it may be typical Heaven Hill, like with Henry McKenna, but this this is so different than the last time I tried this. Like, we, we stuck a bottle of this in a under $25 budget thing, and it came, like, in last place, far and away in last place. And this does not taste like that. This is pretty good. It is single barrel. Maybe you had a bad, bad barrel. That yeah, time. this is a particularly good barrel. I think. I mean, I've had actually. I almost never go without a bottle of the Evan single barrel just because it's really easy to pick up, short money. But this one I really enjoyed. Like I said last summer is when it first hit distribution here, and I just keep having my store order two or three of them at a time because. I dig it and it's cheap. So, yeah, I like it. I think in a blind with some other stuff, even up to like maybe 50 bucks, this could probably hold its own. Mm -hmm. I would think so. And it is interesting. I mean, um, Eric Bourbon for the Masses brought up the the McKenna barrel kind of uh, inconsistency. And I guess I hadn't really considered that maybe, you know, I haven't had enough of these to really be like, yeah, these are super inconsistent, like Knob Creek and jack daniels were back some years ago i i'd be interested to pick up like like 10 of these and just see how many are duds and how many are all stars i feel like i've never had one that was a dud but again we could have the same barrel here for yeah two years when i feel like if it's a dud and it's boring you're like all right it was 19 bucks like right. should it be super crazy yeah do you have the right to be butt hurt over yeah. a 19 dollar whiskey <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> I mean, even even the bad barrels that are, you know, when you're p- playing sub twenty bucks and it's bad, mix it with Coke or something. Oh, oh well, it's twenty bucks out, you know. Hmm. You all might change your mind with this seventeen eighty three, though. Uh, <laughs> well, what I'm wondering is, of this entire lineup, ha- have you guys all had all of these before? Actually, I've not uh, had seventeen eighty three. I know that I've had them all, but for 1783, it's been at least four years. So, I've never had 1783. I've never even seen it. Yeah, when we scheduled this, I went out and bought one like the next day, and then um, I cracked it that night. And um, well, we'll see what happens when we get there. So, <laughs> a lot of people want to set up at um, the store for the single barrel because the bottles are kind of sort of similar. So they'll go reach for the single barrel mm-hmm. and they'll grab the 1783. Okay, I'll be like, no, that's a difference right there. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's not the same. So, Doesn't the single barrel have like wax and stuff on top? And yeah, it does too. Yeah. Do we know that? What? Let's see. Sorry, I'm reading the story here because I haven't read the label and I can't figure out why it's different than black label since it's priced the same as black label. I can't figure out why any of them are different than the other one. Oh, I see. It's distilled to the highest quality. Oh well, okay. <laughs> oh, there you I go. wish that they had distilled black label to the highest quality, and not to the second highest quality. 
Uh, it says number 10 brand on the neck. And That's they call it a small batch. Oh, yes. Okay. Uh, so whiskey labeling has only gotten more opaque, essentially, is, is what I'm thinking here. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, all right, so it's 16 bucks. I mean, I can't think of much other bourbon under $20. You know, as long as this isn't bad, and we'll we'll hold out for that. But Which well, I guess we're probably going to say a lot, like, as long as it's not terrible. Right. But I mean, I would I would go as far as to say that the single bear is truly actually good. Like it is a good whiskey. I'm with you. And if it was at like some open bar at a wedding, like I would probably drink it all night long. Yeah. And regret it later. Yeah, I'll <laughs> know that. So let's go ahead I mean, and I think we've all all had similar experiences at open bars with uh, black label Evan Williams. And Jameson. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, that's that's a rough night. <laughs> that's I drink gin. Just gins never let anyone down. Mine was four roses. Oh, all right, baller. Yeah, no, I think it was think he's up. Wasn't me. Wasn't me. <laughs> oh, okay. All right. Kendrick is getting married next weekend, isn't he? Next Friday. Oh, damn! Nice. Congratulations, man. Congrats. Well, I, I drink the Evan Williams flight to you. <laughs> yeah, whatever one of these wins we could send you the rest of the bottle how's that yeah you have six oh. partial bottles coming <laughs> please don't okay. and I don't want it to cost more than 30 bucks <laughs> happy nuptials and a, and a bunch of flasks as long as it's not 291 I'm good <laughs> oh, well I'll have to look and see what I got left what are we doing now <laughs> White, li white label is that one next? Yeah, let's move up to the yeah. white label here. So, for anybody who's jumping in now, uh, we're just doing a budget bourbon battle. We're using the Evan Williams product line and kind of going through with the black label, white label, single barrel, and 1783, which also doesn't seem to fucking fit their scheme at all. But we're just kind of going through and trying them all. We're not doing it blind, we're just doing a comparison of all of them, sharing notes and seeing what we think is best. And then uh, we'll take a, a ranking from everybody at the end and then just kind of see what wins as the overall top dog for these cheap-ass whiskeys that we still all seem to enjoy, at least to some degree. Yeah, yeah. I've always been surprised by the color that you get out of the bottle and bond. Yeah, right. right. So, I mean, nice. it's not age-dated, but you know it's going to be four years. Yeah. Yep. At least. For, the, for the longest time, the bottle and bond was my like go-to... You know, I'm sitting around playing Call of Duty at two in the morning. What am mm -hmm. I to drink? Until I discovered ancient, ancient age. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> but I love this. I mean, it's like got a caramel corn, kind of candied peanut. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's, it's sweet. It's delicious. Candied peanut all day get, on that. Um, I get a nice banana bread note out of it. Oh, man. You're talking my language now. Keep going. <laughs> I don't even have to share my notes. You guys are doing this for me. This is great. He's almost there. This is, this is the one um, when we do uh, tailgating and stuff. This is the one I take to the tailgate. So I'll just go buy a handle of it. And, take it to the tailgate. Uh, and we just set it out. What's the handle go price? For? $30. Yeah, I think I this was 20 But they only sell it in a liter. So that, I mean, take that in. Hmm. But, it, uh, it's not even on the shelf here yet. It was just listed in Maine this month or last month, rather. Oh, that's and, right. Yeah. So it hasn't actually come here. The bottle that I've got open now is one that I got in Boston last year. We went down at Christmas time. And I stopped in at Gordon's actually. Uh, Jolie might be familiar with a particular Russell's Reserve pick from there. Gordon's. Um, and you bought Evan Williams. Good man. <laughs> I got an Evan Williams white label, uh, McKenna 10. I, I got those because you can't get them in Maine. And then I grabbed a store pick of their Eagle Rare and a store pick Four Roses that I don't remember the recipe on. They had two Four Roses picks in. I tried both and only really cared for one. What recipe? I want to say it's OESV, but don't hold me to it. Wow. All right. Well, <clears throat> I'm not a Four Roses guy, like by nature. I don't have the recipes memorized. I, I haven't stockpiled all the different ones. I try them when they come out or when I see one, but we don't get Four Roses barrel picks in Maine. That's fair. Or Knob Creek picks or Russell's picks or like anything that's that great. So. I don't I feel really... like anyone that isn't a Four Roses fan just like hasn't become one yet. Yeah, I mean, if I had access to it, I, I would most certainly already have them all. Yeah, unfortunately, the access is dwindling, unlike Evan Williams. 
Correct. I guess unless you live in Maine. Oh well, yeah, there's also. <laughs> Sorry, that. I, I didn't mean to like kick you while you were down. I thought it was going to end on a positive, but then I ended on a negative. It's okay. I, I usually start and end on the negative. You know, Jordan, I never really thought of the candy corn note, but I really get that on the nose with this one. After yeah, you know, I think that's going on. I think candy corn is a is a good description. I get, you know, I get that. I think the banana bread though is like a. There's a mm-hmm. grainy element to it. Yeah, you know, it's kind of yeah. Like a, Banana uh, nut bread for me, like and a, it's the same in the McKenna's too. Right. Mm-hmm. The cheap it's McKenna's. like a burnt caramel. I was gonna yeah. say, I get, uh, I'm getting a lot more grain out of this than the previous two. Yeah, it comes through as a little bit grainy, but for me, it doesn't present itself in like a a crafty way or like a young way. It's just kind of like a present. I, I think I really do like. I relate. Uh, even McKenna Brown Label the same way you know that's 12.99 and it's like banana upward for me and that's it like it kind of stops there i think the uh, 100 proof on this is a game changer compared to the rest i mean it's Mm -hmm. yeah i'm already i mean i've been a a white label fanboy for you know a long time now but the single barrel was good but i think the proof points on this one are a game changer it carries it nicely too yeah, it's got more a lot more length than the finish. The cinnamon at the end just carries through yeah. a lot longer. Mm. I'm with I you just on that. noticed that the uh, on the front of the the white label it says DSP Kentucky One. Are they literally the first distillery in Kentucky? Yeah, that's their thing. That's what it says. Yeah, I think it even like says Kentucky that on one game. of the bottles. Kentucky's huh. first distillery. I've never noticed that. Yeah, yeah, I think it's on the black label Evan Williams, possibly. Right. Oh yeah, you're right. Yep, Kentucky's yep. first distiller. Yep. Well. Shows how much I pay attention to labels. Seriously. <laughs> I mean, if you haven't memorized Evan Williams labels, I'm, you got nothing. Yeah, seriously. What, what are you even doing in this? What do you even have in this life? I'll, I'll go against the grain here. I think, uh, I mean, this is certainly good. It's a little bit richer on the palate. Longer finish, but I uh, I think the single barrel is better. And that hurts to say as someone who is sitting on a liter of the white label. Yeah, you might want to get a chair instead holding. of a bottle. I'm still holding on single barrel in the top spot. For yeah, me as well. the nose on the single barrel is just sublime compared. I mean, the white label is yeah. good, but uh, black label is doing okay, but it's in the back. But I mean, it's the single barrel is just so much richer, and I'm I'm happy to give up some proof points and a little viscous mouthfeel to to have a just a more complex drinking experience. Yeah, I think there is more oak on the single barrel for sure. Um, That's. But I don't, I don't, I don't yeah, know I think the single barrel is more complex. That, that brings out, I think yeah. you get more diverse flavors in this one. I like the toasted notes in the um, in the single barrel, but whatever. With this one is like flavor right from the beginning. I mean, it just kind of smacks you in the face. Yeah, I yeah. would totally agree with that. I think probably double the age on the single barrel is helping on the single barrel for complexity, but sure. that 10 extra percent, I guess, 7% ABV is, is really helping this carry. Yep, that's fair. Oh man, good. Yeah, though. you're right about the nose on the single barrel, though. I just went back to it, and it just kind of has this whole kind of bloom to it. Yeah, so, there's a lot more going on there. It's deeper. Yeah, I think the bottom of the bond peaks on the palate, and the single barrel yeah. just kind of starts off in a good place on the nose. Yeah, I hadn't thought of it that way. That's a good way to put it, though. I mean, like one sip of that bottle in the bond, you're just like, oh yeah, man, this is good. I like this. Yeah, and then like, <laughs> you know, it's got those. Uh, 100 proof points to kind of carry around for a little bit so it sticks around you get a little of that tingle but it doesn't really ever get much deeper than that initial sip yeah that's fair yeah you know what's funny though i go back to nosing on the uh single barrel after doing the bottle and bond and you know we, we talked about the kind of the banana notes in the bottle and bond and then you you go to the single barrel which is more of that toasted marshmallow nutty i go back to the nose after it and i'm getting a lot more banana now yeah, I can totally see that. Uh, the single barrel? Yeah, a lot more banana out yeah. of the single barrel. Man, that single barrel comes out sweet that second time around. Anybody going back to the black label and doing comparisons there? Because they are far and wide. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Very different. <laughs> yeah. There's a quick hello. Hmm. Yeah, I kind of don't want to drink the rest of the Black Label now. Oh, come yeah. on. <laughs> you drank worse things today. I Yeah. 
going back. Damn it. Home. How did you I know? Still, I actually still really like the black label. Black labels like green and black. A lot of the a lot of the bars around here do, you know, like uh, two dollar rail drinks or whatever, you know, for for happy hour. And they either have green or black label or beam white label. Oh, I take uh, this over beam white label any day. Yes. Yeah, I mean, I like beam white label too, but uh, the um, the black label, you know. I guess maybe I'm just so used to it. I mean, it's it still stands up with the other ones. I don't know that it's blown away, but it's not, you know, if you're looking for something that's more flavorful and more complex, it, it just falls flat. Yeah, I can go <clears> along. <throat> I mean, I, I think I totally agree with you there. If this was like, if I kept enough of this on hand, this would totally be my real drink all the time. Like it holds up in a cocktail. I can serve it neat. You know, if I have someone over that, wants to drink it on the rocks, I have no problem just, you know, just dump it on there. I would be interested to water the white label down uh, to meet the black label and see if there's really that much difference in the two or if it or if it's really just in the proof. Let's give it a go. Try to say I could try. We're going to we're going to like build on I won't say build nice science, but like we if we tinker a little bit. So how many drops of water does it take to lower your proof to what? 100 to 90, 86, 86. So it's like, I'm going to do some math. No, I don't, don't want to do math. actual math. I just want to ballpark it. <laughs> we have, we have like the sharpest dude in bourbon here with us and he wants us to do the math. Come on, take let me get my TI-83. Hey, we'll figure it out. The, wor the work day's over. My math degree doesn't got to work any, anywhere. <laughs> Unfortunately for you, my math degree is not good. <laughs> All right. So we. I'll just be like here sniffing in the background, but. Go on. Yeah. I mean, it should be about the same. This, this is cold water. So I'm going to let it warm up a little bit. Otherwise, it'll be unfair. But I guess maybe. Have more black label. You dig into that for a second, Kendrick. Tell us about your uh, your bar scenario for the wedding. Oh, what's yeah. going to be? What, what's everybody sipping on? How's the bar setup going to be? What's the uh, oh, well, groom's been oh, drinking? We just want to know what to expect when we all show up there. Oh, my <laughs> ceremony is only ten people or fifteen okay. people, so so only two there bottles. Won't be much. There'll be. I'm opening a Weller foolproof. I'm hearing that my one of my dad's fraternity brothers got me a uh, Elijah Craig 18 year. Ooh, so nice! I think he's supposed to bring that down, and then me and the future misses are going to open up this peerless double oak that she wants to that she mentioned that she wanted to open, just to see what it's like. Nothing too crazy though. Maybe a little 12 year, well or 12 and. Some pursuit series sounds good, man. I, I was gonna be drinking the morning and the afternoon, but not the evening. <laughs> I'll be and that was a lie. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> good luck. But next year we'll see what happens. We're having our reception a year from the wedding, so who knows what will come out this year that I'll have there. Yeah, maybe the eight or was it the eighteen-year marriage? Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. The Taylor. It's Taylor. supposed to be coming here, but um, we'll see. ISO. I figured. <laughs> <laughs> if I get one, I'll definitely send you guys some. But it, it's gonna be. It's usually ugly here. Our allocations are so fucking small. The year will be like twenty thirty two, and it'll finally show up. Yeah, it'll be the same <laughs> case that arrived this year, though. But it'll be they, they just finally moved it out of the warehouse. You know what's yeah, funny, though, I mean, just in kind of being the whiskey nerd here, the EHT 18 year, they're already speculating on secondary. It's going to have over a thousand dollar value, and it retails at seventy nine dollars. The Wild Turkey 17 year bottled and bond, right? So we're talking about they're both bottled and bonds, one year apart. And Wild Turkey probably has fewer bottles at seven. I think they have fourteen to seventeen thousand bottles of that Master Keep expression. It retails at one seventy-five, and it's already falling in price on secondary 
some went for like 350 two weeks ago and they're already backing down to 275 because, well, because it's released already when you forgot the key it's difference there is that one of them was made of buffalo trays right well yeah i mean that's the thing but it's just it's corny right i mean it's pun intended but you know <laughs> it's still going to be my number one allocation pick if, oh yeah if the i mean store it's, gets one I, i'm going to take that over pappy yeah it's going to be a special it's just funny that the the fandom over buffalo trace when there's you know equally as good and what aged bourbon out there that people are just kind of like nah yeah. <laughs> well, I think what you have to consider too is that the EH T uh, Taylor product line is so much deeper than Masters Keep, or you know. Yeah, I mean, so you got guys with definitely true nine expressions that need that tenth to keep the value up, and you know, I don't know what it goes for now if you have everything back beyond sour mash and stuff like that. But someone was trying to sell a full set for I think it was like it was like twenty five thousand dollars or twenty five. I was thinking like 17, 18, so that's even bonkers over that. But I mean, those guys will pay the, you know, the grand they need to keep that set up because, you know, having that full set value is just bonkers. Can we talk also, about, uh, go ahead. Can we talk about something real quick? I'm pretty sure I just saw Kendrick licking the side of his glass. Did anybody <laughs> else notice that? Did that just happen in real life? Oh, probably. Are we just going to let that go? Like it wasn't a thing or. I mean, when you get that dribble, you got to catch it. Yikes. So I was trying to pour it into another little glass, and it got on the very edge. So I was like, I'm not going to let that go to waste. No, I understand. I just I just wanted to know <laughs> if I was the only one that saw it. And if we were just going to like keep talking about wild turkey prices, <laughs> or if we were going to address that. It wasn't a sample uh, lick, but it was a good lick nonetheless. Yeah. Did you proof down the white label? I did. So, uh, and, and to to two dudes um you would be half correct but i only have a fifth glenn karen because i'm an idiot and didn't expect this kind of science experiment to come so i uh, i do have uh oh i thought it was a rare bird one but i guess it's just a normal one but i needed something with backups which were these ridiculous thing preposterous, um, glass. preposterous glasses 1783 yeah I'm so this is the white label white label down to 83 ish ish We'll take it. Black label. Honestly, I think I'd probably take the black label in a completely unscientific. That's just me, though. I think the black label is better at a natural proof. And that's probably because I'm using non Kentucky Wisconsin drain water in a ridiculous <laughs> glass. But I will, uh, I will drain water or tap water. Or just, just checking for a friend wanted to know. Uh, so Rainwater, can... actually. I stood on the okay. porch earlier and I collected it. Just you proofed down the uh, bottle and like bond that. to 43 ish. Yeah, I'll, I'll do this officially this week with math on my side, but I don't know. What you know I kind of did the same thing, and the that white label gets really soft. Yeah, it does. That's exactly it. The, the black label still has some character, which I never thought I'd say out loud, especially mm. to people, <laughs> to real life humans <laughs> on the internet uh, that would also go on to judge me about it. But yeah, the, I mean, the black label is great. It's. Fourteen dollars. Guess or? it's. I, I mean, the, after thinking about it, the difference is the all of the whiskey and the in the white label is going to be the same. Whereas they're using the black label. Um, it is four years, but they're dumping a lot of older stuff into it that's been rejected. Also, yeah, yeah good way to hide those off-profile barrels. Especially, I don't know that I know the full. You know, I don't know what a batch of Black Label is in, in volume-wise, but I'd imagine that they're blending some really, really nasty 12-plus ear barrels in, and they're going on yeah. those. But it kind of shows in when you dilute one. Yeah, they'd have to tuck all those wonky barrels in there somewhere. Hashtag wonky barrels. Hashtag <laughs> wonky barrels get wonked dot com. Don't, don't go, go there. Out. Don't go there. <laughs> all right, are we on the 1783 now? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, let's dig in and then uh, start thinking Woo. about which one of these you want to trim. That 1783 is fucking hot. Really? I haven't, I haven't tasted it yet, so it's, it's hot. The nose. I mean, the nose is like sour and 86. Yeah. Oh, really? The... This one this one reminds me a lot of the single barrel. Really? I think it's 
it's really sweet, but it leans toward that banana side. Yeah. So the the sure. interesting thing about the single or the 83 is that it's the only one that they label as a small batch. Small batch, yeah. Huh. It yeah, but actually, I mean, I mean, I mean, but what's a small batch to have now? Right. What is that? Right, 250 yeah. barrels, 30, what? Yeah, maybe more. Legally undefined. Right. It's like natural yeah. flavor, you know, like what is natural? Right. I mean, if, if black labels for 4,000 barrels, then small batch may be 2,800. Or 3,500. <laughs> Or three thousand nine hundred and ninety nine. <laughs> I knew one of you nerds is gonna do the math. Fuck, I hate you guys. I mean, it's Heaven Hill, so it's Heaven yeah. Hill. We know that they're right. doing the kind of math all day. Five thousand barrels could be a small batch for them. Who the hell knows? Not me, man. That's for sure. They're gigantic. <laughs> so this one um, comes off like, you get, like <laughs> Red. green wood out of it. Yeah, you can still see my whiskey closet. It's uh, it's okay. Oh, there we go. <laughs> See, the problem is previously the the whiskey closet had a Tie Fighter in it, which is owned by Disney. And if anything owned by Disney ever ends up in a live stream on YouTube, they axe the entire thing. Yep. Because and then they call your dad and tell him that you were being a prick on the internet. <laughs> I go to jail. <laughs> so I moved it out, rolled it in a barrel because I had nowhere else to go. Anyways, continue. I was just just saying that this one comes off. There's like a green wood. It tastes kind of sour to me, and it drinks a lot hotter than forty three percent. Is this one forty three percent too? Man, yeah, yeah this mm -hmm. it is. this one has got an uppercut for forty three percent. Really? I don't. I'm not getting much heat at all on this one. I mean, I it's not like tired. it's not like Stag Junior or anything, man. But this is like this, this is, is like it's eighty six proof. You take one of those caramel sour apple suckers. Oh yeah. Dip oh, it yeah. in water and you spin it around <laughs> and all the caramel off of it and get down to that sour apple sucker. That's yeah, what I you just... get. You so you spent some time doing that, huh? Do Probably as a child. <laughs> Probably as a child three or four weeks ago. <laughs> You're not able to get the seventeen eighty three in Maine. Do you want the rest of my bottle? <laughs> yeah. Sure. You want five bottles? <laughs> I don't, Everyone might sends be all of this to John. I don't know if we'll I want all of them. We'll go to the People's Champ here and say that this is something like a box of Apple Jacks that's started to mold. Mold? You think it's funky? Huh. Oh, mold's a strong word. I don't know if I... I don't get any mold out of it. I just I get... It's, it's like it's a funky. one hit. I just get sweetness, and then it just drops off completely. Eric, I don't believe for one second that you're using an actual microphone. I think I'm hearing you <laughs> yell from fucking Tennessee. Well, you see, I have this microphone, but my but my fucking boom stand hasn't gotten here. So we're just sitting on the desk. We could we could get oh, here. that sounds oh, great. Can oh, you, you sound, it upside you down? You sound good like that. Scream Let's just it, sit but... here and hold it. Can you please screenshot so, that? <laughs> yeah, can somebody I'll get all this? Did you? Please, I got gotcha. you. We we we've got some quality sound here. It's just uh, lacking some equipment. That's, I don't I think mean, everything went back ordered like week two of quarantine. So, oh yeah, we understand your yep. plight. My wedding was back ordered too. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> sure. <laughs> You're, you're being such a good sport about it, Kendrick. We're we're in the middle of planning a wedding ourselves, and we're lucky that we like didn't put any deposits down. And I was like, yeah. I would be, I would be un, untainable on the internet. I would just be salty all day long if like I planned a wedding and it got bumped around. What's worse is the honeymoon original spot. Uh, the resort's closed until August in Jamaica. So oh no, yeah, push that back a year too. Oh man, I'm sorry. Yeah, Ocho Rios is now officially closed forever. Sorry. Thanks for coming out. <laughs> but at least you have Evan Williams. <laughs> Man, I'm going to have to compare. I'm gonna so go I keep saying that. It never gets less label. funny in my head. Like, <laughs> I kind of want to go bust okay, out so, my green label. So mold, mold, wrong term. Let's go with the sour. Uh, it, it's back yeah. to that sour apple mm -hmm. thing. A little musty. I wouldn't even say musty. It's just kind of this young, sour, sweet, and uh, I'm not a fan. I mean, sweet, it literally does, it does say sour mash, small mash on the bottle. <laughs> they all do. So black label sour mash, white labels of sour mash. Oh, it does say genuine sour mash. 
98 percent of bourbons a sour mash yeah i mean it honestly, might even think, be more than 98 i think the way that i would want to drink this is like combine it with the black label so you get a little more of that sweetness and then you get some of the darker the you know kind of bitter notes on the end but by itself this is it's a one-hit wonder for me it's just all sweet and then nothing yeah well, for science here we go blender select over there <laughs> I'm gonna run out of glasses in like five minutes, guys. So we don't have anything else. Just go to your pantry and get the rest of the other ones, right? Your rocks glasses. <laughs> you like drinking out of like a Chardonnay glass. Oh, <laughs> get out the margarita glasses. Honestly, I, 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 I should have been tasted with those. Just get uh, whiskey nut Evan Williams batch coming to a bar near you soon. <laughs> Yeah, we must we must have different small batches because I don't get any of the like the moldiness or the funkiness. I I can see the sour apple though. Like, who said yeah. the 1783? Was it Joel? It was Blue Tape, right? Yeah, Blue Tape is me. Blue Tape to you. <laughs> that's how I know my samples. I go, oh, Blue Tape. That's Joel. Yeah, usually Jordan's are uh, actually he's got really nice handwriting, so he uses these like little uh, like brown um whimsical looking stickers and then he writes on them and i can usually discern his samples from the rest by that because a i can read what he wrote on it and <laughs> b he's got those uh glass bottles and c he's got a very jordan looking label I and mean, then joel's look like a I cave band in it this yeah, label is can just we talk about that yeah, well, then, then you get the label. sent you this because this yeah. is the best label I've ever seen in my entire life. No, I totally <laughs> ripped off take on this too. You should give that guy who suggests the label maker like a like some more Evan Williams. Give him a raise. Yeah, you want a 1783? <laughs> How about five <laughs> bottles? I um use the blue tape because I don't expect anybody to be able to read my handwriting. So yeah, that's fair. Yeah, I've seen those samples before. And people, people are like, "What is this? It's good." And I'm like, "Dude, I wrote it on the piece of tape on the bottle." And they have to send me a picture of the piece of tape so I can tell them what they're drinking. Yep. <laughs> All right. The so worst. verdict on uh, verdict on mixing the black label in the 1783 is that it makes neither of them better. So that the 1780 <laughs> black is no good, is what we're saying. <laughs> no, I, I I will keep the 1783 all day long, but. Uh, and I'd keep the black label too, but I think that a uh, no discernible no. improvement has been achieved here. The twain shall never Who be. Who wants their own bottle of the 1783? <laughs> <laughs> send it up to John. I don't know. Did, didn't I send you a couple of decent samples? They're like, do I really need you to send me that? <laughs> is that is that how I get repaid? Just so we'll be running a, a contest with zero entry fee. Yeah, I'll razzle it for free. How do you think this would hold up in a cocktail, though? I bet this would be good. Yeah, I think it would be fine, to be cocktail. honest with you. I mean, I think it it carries, it brings a little bit more heat than some of the others. I don't know. Some of these like thinner bourbons are tough for me because if they're not complex, I end up saying that they're hot, but they're really not. Like, there's not a lot of ethanol coming through it or anything. It just no, is no. kind of thin. It might mm -hmm. be good in a whiskey sour. Yeah, I yeah. would. I would. Uh, the 1783 to me has just a little bit more oak structure, which to me screams like throw me in a cocktail all day long, especially if there's like citrus involved. I think I was thinking a gold rush. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. I don't know that I'd throw this in like a Manhattan or an old fashioned mm -hmm. because those bitters will just just crush the life out of this. But yeah, um, so I'm going back to the single barrel and the white label. All right, let's start peeling one away here. So I, I, I would vote for the black. Oh, oh, you hurt me. <laughs> yeah, I was going to go with black over this. I'm rooting the black, personally. Are we um, kicking one to eliminate? We're kicking one out? Yes. Let's please trim one off. 1783 is out for me. All right, so we got two 1783 and two black. There's just enough of that, like, almost like a little bit of a toasty toffee mm. in the 1783 that a little bit of okay. that fruity. Mm -hmm. Man. Yeah. I was on the fence, but I tried the black again. 1783 is by far my least favorite. Oh, I didn't expect that sentence to end that way. The seven, yeah, the black tastes way better after the 1783. So, so what's making this a little tough for me is that I, I cut my teeth on 
Evan Williams Black. Like that's where I got into bourbon. And we're talking over a decade ago when I knew next to nothing. It was like Evan Williams Black, Benchmark, Jim Beam. And I would use the same bourbon in my marinade for steak as I would sit there and drink it next to the grill. Like there was no like, oh, this is cooking bourbon. This is tasting bourbon. And man, just I have never been disappointed by Evan Black. But yeah. at to the me, same time, I've never had 1783. So like the novelty is kind of striking me, I think. I don't not like it. Are yeah, I don't see what three three. All right, who's who's for kicking out 1783? Me. Raise There's a no, hand. There's no contest for me with that one. All right. <laughs> I'm keeping 1783. Like hands down better than 1783. <laughs> oh no, this is gonna go. All right. So who wants just, to kick out I'm just black? Label? It has more balance. We got one. Who's taking out black label? Black label's out for me. And Kendrick. Okay. Uh, yeah. Three, three. Three. So we're split. <laughs> so so, right, so, so far, this isn't great. Seventh person. We got. Oh, but well, I, mean, I think that means that our top two are the single barrel and the bottled and bond. Yeah, per, I think maybe we just right. made our life easier and we cut out both black label and <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we can. Yeah, we can all agree they're the bottom two. Yeah, I think. <laughs> This is where we need like that that like really hot assistant to come and like shuffle up the black in the seventeen eighty three and then we'll figure <laughs> out which one really sucks the most. But oh yeah, right. Or an we, odd uh, number of people. Jordan, you were in charge of getting the assistant scheduled for tonight. <sighs> yeah, you you're right. Was. Uh, He's fired. Yeah, you we're gonna have to take that check back. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Jordan's out. We're just going to go ahead and bring in the whiskey cam. <laughs> whiskey cam. Bring everybody up to speed here. So we've got the uh, Evan single barrel and white label. So now we win. Slide. That was cold blooded. <laughs> 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 yeah. So, oh, so you know guess- what's funny? Other than, other than Kendrick in Kentucky, you've got Wisconsin and Maine who don't like the, um, the who, who, are in favor of the 1783 and then you got two Virginians in Tennessee who don't like the, uh, the 1783s. I don't I like know what that means, anything, analysis. but I'm just, you know, just curious. Evidently. Yeah. Uh, it is a little bit regional tonight. <laughs> Except for Kendrick. Kendrick is. The, <laughs> I think if there was a cheese curd in the bottom of the black label, I would have liked it like just a little bit more. Just enough. Oh yeah. Just yeah, enough to squeeze through. God, I love cheese curds. I'm from upstate New York, and they're everywhere there. Can't get them here. Yeah. But you can get it with your apple pie here, so that's cool. So are we trying to decide what our favorite is between the white label yeah. and the single barrel? Yep. All right, so I'm just going to take a quick second here and go back through. Uh, for anybody who's just jumping in now, we're kind of going through the uh, budget bourbon battle with Evan Williams products. We poured the 1783, the white label, the single barrel, and the black label. And we're just kind of tasting through them and seeing which ones we like the most, see which ones we like the least, what we do and don't like about them. And then we're just kind of rating these where uh, we have so far trimmed off the 1783 and the black label. And evidently, we've also trimmed Jordan off the stream. <laughs> and we're so tasting I'm not the now. Only one with internet issues now. <laughs> it was a joke. Oh, man, he's back. Okay. So now we're going through the. Uh, white label and the single barrel to sort of see which one of these is going to come out on top and which one is ultimately going to be our best of the Evan Williams flight of the evening. I know I said it in like the, the white label as much, but I ran out of it. So I guess that's kind of. Yeah, that's telling. Well, I guess you should pour some more then. Yep. You've been doing a lot of science too, so you deserve a little bit extra, I think. That's true. I wish that worked for like my day job. Like I did a tiny bit of work. Yeah. Just give me the day. That's I was actually thinking about that earlier. I put some new furniture in my office. I got some uh nice new bookshelves with cabinets and everything. I was like, man, I could uh totally pull a Joel and have like seven or eight bottles of Russell's Reserve in there. And then I was like, Yeah, but you know what's gonna happen? will be like a casual Thursday afternoon where I'm like, well, you know, I configured one new wireless access point and then 
I, I fixed a, a couple of minor issues on one firewall. I deserve a little bit. Now you know I don't work for my little whiskey closet. <laughs> There's not a lot of free space in there. Most of it's <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, well, my, mind, my mind is made up. So, yeah. I think mine is too. I think like, so I'll get just just off the nose. There, there's a bit of youth on the white label that the single barrel doesn't have. Yep. Yep. So it single sounds like definitely we're most likely going to be leaning the same direction towards a single barrel here. Yes. No. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> oh. Joel, uh, yeah, Joel, Joel has been disconnected from the chat. Oh, sorry, guys. Joel has left the chat. He's been biased since the very first pour. All he wants to do is guzzle white label. <laughs> tailgate. Tailgate. It's the tailgate one. I mean, it's, it's never done me wrong. This man was tailgate. I understand that. I think I just I, get too much corn from the white label. That's kind of yeah pushing yeah. me away from it. It's, it's heavier on the grain for sure. I think Eric is absolutely right about the nose. White label is younger on the nose. Um, but I think really, I think those seven proof points add a, a lot more to it than you get from like, if you, if you do them side by side, one, one right Is after that the not other, what the, we're all doing. The, I kind uh, of feel like, yeah, it just yeah, depends yeah, on what you're, confirm. yeah, but, uh, the, the single barrel just falls a little bit flat. I mean, it's nice and it's buttery and everything, but the, those proof points is kind of, um, I think those carry the day for me. I don't know why. I feel like they're two kind of different, you know, the single barrel's got more of the delicate, like honey and floral kind of stuff going on. And it's really nice. But then the white label is just that big punch of that yeah. sweetness and caramel. So yeah, that's tough. I, do you want complex or do you want like one really big note? Yeah. I'm with you on that. I, I think the white label is kind of a one trick pony in that aspect. I mean, sure. you get everything you're going to get out of it by nosing it once and having a sip and it, i don't mean right. that in a bad way either it's all there and everything you get is good uh, if you're somebody who's going to be real shy on that graininess or anything that's younger it's going to be a little bit tough i think it's worth pointing out that <clears throat> sorry i keep keep coughing here um I think it's worth pointing out that while I definitely have a favorite, and that's a single barrel, that uh, you know, you could easily justify one of these being better over the other based on what you want to do with it. Um, mm -hmm. You know, true. Evan Williams, you know, the bottle and bond neat is great. On the rocks is fantastic. I would not put the single barrel on the rocks because, like, mm -hmm. it's going to lose all of its body. If you want to yeah. cook with it, if you want to cocktail with it, if you want to. I mean, let's be real. For all tagging, and you want to shoot something like the white label is the one to do. Uh, those seven proof points matter when there's a buzzer beater for the game starting. But I, like, I like that. <laughs> I like that. I bet you'd be surprised though doing the if we did this blind. I bet yeah, you oh, yeah. people would pick the white. Just based I mean, off the I'm higher proof. I think that a lot of people, if, if you're drawn to a richer mouthfeel, the white, the white totally has a, you know, it coats your palate. Like you can feel it on the back palate. Like it kind of sticks around, but yeah, at, at least for me, the graininess on the nose and Oak is something I'm super sensitive to. And I pick up, I mean, and rightly so it's almost twice the age on the single barrel. Mm -hmm. There's so much more Oak that like, that's undeniable. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And thankfully, I mean, and I think here, yeah, a liter of, of the white label is more expensive than a bottle of the single barrel, and I'd probably give up that extra volume since like I can't tailgate and I usually don't cook with bourbon. And if I'm mixing bourbon, I'm probably gonna mix wild turkey. You know, a single barrel might be a, a no brainer sell. Yeah. Uh, which I hurts mean, to say as someone who like hoisted it up during the sleeper bourbon thing. If you bring price into it, at least here, um a handle of white labels like 21 bucks and a fifth of single barrels like 24. So, I mean, for less, for less price, you get over twice the amount in a bottle in white label. But it, it like you say, it depends what you're going for. The, the single barrel just is, is more well-rounded, you know? Yeah. It, yeah. And it, it, it's, the, it's the age that does. 
So am I the am I the one outlier this time? Yes. <laughs> you I'm are the so. weakest link. Yeah. He could get voted off. He doesn't get to come back next time. Is that how it's it we are he didn't make a bad bourbon. Like the white right. label is perfectly great bourbon. Oh yeah. You yeah, know what we should have put in here for uh budget bourbons? I'm just kidding. Evan Williams, honey. <laughs> <laughs> oh, get this guy out! All right, Joel can no. stay. Hey, replace him with the whiskey. No, can. no, no! Somebody gave fair. me. Somebody gave me a bottle of it, and it's been sitting in the back of like the cabinet because I don't want to open it. You haven't even cracked it away. yet. No. Well, oh, I might. I might have cracked it for my fiance's gold rush because she All likes right. more sweeter no, no well, that would work yeah. great in a gold rush too. But other than that, I'm just like, so they're like, oh, here I got you a bottle of bourbon. I'm like, that's not bourbon. No. <laughs> no, stuff Surgeon like that, you take it, you point. stick it in the freezer. I mean, you take stuff like that, you stick it in the freezer, you pull it out and drink it from the bottle when, <laughs> when you've just gone to hell. Yeah. <laughs> or you can do what Gallia does and put it out by the street for like some homeless guy to walk by and pick up. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah, I suppose you could do that. <laughs> See, I don't know. I do, if I had to get rid of it, I do I do an old fashioned, but I do like seventy five you know, three parts bourbon to one part something honey and i'd ax down the sugar cube or whatever mm -hmm. but i mean then you have to make like 60 old fashions to get rid of that bottle because you're yeah. <laughs> so i don't know maybe you, you get like halfway through and you get frustrated and you just like throw it out the window at a hobo or something just throw it in a pitcher yeah. just put it yeah, in tea or of. lemonade or something and be done yeah with it. yeah i think, I, think I would have a party just to have enough people over to drink the bottle <laughs> i have done that <laughs> like a i do a kill party the yeah. party related expenses just to get yep. rid of that seven dollar bottle of whiskey that I, uh, I have done that. <laughs> I would when I was Christmas at a party with their signature cocktail. Yeah. I was surprised at how bad the wild turkey honey was or whatever they call it. Uh, it's some Ooh. flavored. Oh it was part of the, yeah, it was American part of the tasting. Honey. Also rock and rice honey. honey. Also yeah. Yeah. It was you part of remember. the tasting at Wild Turkey, and it was absolutely disgusting. It tasted like orange triaminic. Like I couldn't get past one sip. It's so bad. You got to remember that that tasting has to be catered to dudes who are most or folks who are more than likely not entirely bourbon nerds. Like, yeah, which, sure. Like fifty percent of a group like is going to be somebody dragging along their significant other who doesn't give a damn about being there or about tasting it. So they get to try to like. You know, kill two birds with one stone, for lack of a better term. Oh, yeah. There were lots of couples there that were like, oh, well, we're just driving across the country in our RV, and we were at Makers and Jack mm -hmm. Daniels. And, yeah. Hey, that's some oh, Virginia whiskey. What was that light looking <laughs> devil? <laughs> I was not Evan Williams for the first time of the night. Yeah, what are you doing? I, this was in the when I bought a, a bunch of the Evan, this was in my car. It's a Virginia distillery that does single malts. This is their latest. Yeah, but can I highlight you here? That's that's conviction, right? Yeah. Okay. And so you know when I when I get a bunch of um, stuff to cost and ship people, I um, you know get those minis that come for free and send them to John. Because <laughs> these fucking guys are the worst type of friends. Let me tell you now. But this one I kept because it's it's actual whiskey from a distillery that has a decent reputation. Yeah, he and, keeps uh, dog shit whiskey, and they send me bottles of fucking rum chata, <laughs> limon. I can't. And I'm not making this up. That's real life. Know. Like I've got those bottles, and he was like butt hurt that I hadn't used them to make a cocktail. And I'm like, <laughs> I don't even know what I would do with. Like fucking seven percent ABV lemon milk. Like, give me a fucking break. To be fair, I did send one of them to um, Leighton. So, you know, yeah, I spread sure. the love. I spread the love. I think I'd be clear. And I can send you. To be clear, I really want you to just open one and pound it on, like, on a call like that. I want to watch you have to choke through a lemon rum chata. That's <laughs> no cocktails. Absolutely heinous of you. <laughs> I've drank some suspect things, and I don't even know that lemon rum chata is near the the concerning part of that list. I don't know that I want to do that. The worst <laughs> thing I've drank in a long time is that PBR whiskey that Galicia <laughs> sitting around. No, I <laughs> very shit. much got that, Playboy. Come on. That's the five-second one, right? That's done right here. Age five seconds, baby. It's so bad. It's hey, at so least bad. they know what they're doing, and they own it. 
I yep. think the barrel that they age it in has a hole in either side, and it just Air streams pump. in and right back out the other. Yeah. Uh, Captain Morgan, their procedure does that to call it a gold room. They're they're essentially pumping it through an oak vessel. Yeah, right. It's like a tube. A long, thin oak <laughs> vessel. <laughs> I just want to say that I fight. really appreciated my Jamaican rum lesson today about pouring rum okay. into a pit in the ground. That, that's the pretty dunder cool. pit? That was yeah. crazy. The under I will send that was pretty out, badass. I will send out some samples of Doc if nobody has had Doc Pro. Uh, I think... Uh, Dan sent me some of that actually. Have you had doc? Yeah, we <laughs> right. we privately bought a bunch of rum and like like a really funky rum is like 200 ester count and doc comes in at 1489. Oh, I like keep it in a cabinet inside of a bag because it makes <laughs> inside of like, a cage. <laughs> like, like death, in case the fucking light from a full moon accidentally touches it. Are you just afraid it's going to infect your other bottles? <laughs> the problem is that if I open the cabinet without it being in a bag, everything smells like Doc, and also it's very flammable. Please at, put that in the mail and see what happens. At eighty-five point <laughs> seven six percent ABV. Oh, Pour it straight into a padded envelope in the middle of you know the June humidity in Virginia, and just see what happens. I believe it. Yeah, that it spontaneously combusts. I mean, it'd probably make it through with COVID going around, so. It probably, honestly, it's disinfectant at this point. Um, if you drink late, it, you're immune, right? Yeah, that's hazmat. For sure. You're drunk, but you're immune. Yeah. Yeah, Leighton, that's, uh, yeah, it, Doc, Jamaican funk can usually be like burning tires, burning bananas, um, burning fruit, burning wood. Everything's uh, on people. fire. <laughs> Everything is, yeah, a little bit on fire. I mean, it, everything's it's really on fucking fire, but it's all it's savory. Okay. It's like barbecue ribs. It's kind of fucking wild. Barbecue ribs that are on fire, but everything gonna be out of you. <laughs> In I a good way though. Like those those shouldn't way. scare you away. <laughs> yeah, I have a sample of that funky Jamaican rum that uh from Dan in Chicago. Oh, the funk? Doc, Dr. Dr. Bird Jamaican. I can't Dr. read the label. Bird, yeah. Yeah. Kale, yeah. That's the good stuff. That's, That's what Jason had a cough syrup. Isn't bottle. It like a, Single barrel uh, pick that's been finished in something, though the one dancing thing around. He has a few. I think he sent me just the standard one. The standard one is great. I like it just as much as all the single barrels. If you guys go to take dot review. You'll see the review of that today. Actually, save me over yeah. one free. <laughs> Put that goody <laughs> quote up there. <laughs> Help me, Tom Cruise. To use your witch powers. God, there we go. Jordan knew it. <laughs> I mean, if you're in the video, I'm not going to put your quota on the screen, am I? Like, is, that, is that how that works? So let's see. Um, so we like going uh, lowest to highest. We're going to put Black Label 1783 tied for low. Yeah, and I guess then we're going to do. I really like the 1783, but I like the bottle to bond better. So I have to put it at the bottom. And then we're going to call the uh, single barrel the somewhat split decision even though we don't trust joel it's not a split decision i mean it, it wins i'm i'm the outlier it's a four to one majority. right but here's the Five thing though one. it's a single barrel so are right. we looking for like everyone can go taste this exact thing no I everybody can't it's, go taste it. it's clear I that heavy I have a single barrel here. yeah i have one that i can guarantee it'll come in last place <laughs> <laughs> Legendary palate has spoken. <laughs> it's that it really is that bad. bad. Um, but no, this one this one was fantastic. Yeah, this one's really good. Yeah, yeah this is a barrel would, that I'm pumped about. I would put this at the top of mine. You know, this tasting, this exact barrel, definitely yeah. my number one. And I'm happy to. I mean, I really enjoyed the single barrel. But uh, happy to admit that I've definitely got biased towards the white label because it has been the, other than you know just regular Bowman Brothers, the uh, Evan it's White. Been your old standby. That's, that's been the standby. Like yeah. I said, take it to the tailgates. That's what I give anybody who wants to try bourbon. You know, whatever. Evan Williams White. If I see someone in the liquor store who's looking for something to try, I say start with this. You're not going to go wrong. And uh, most of them listen to me. Yeah, so, that's fair. You 
it's easy Bowman to brothers is that virginia craft distillery right well it's yeah. that virginia buffalo trace redistilled mash and okay aged. okay okay, okay. <laughs> try not to say anything if you like buffalo trace mash bills one or two or both <laughs> then yes it is that distillery in virginia <laughs> If you and would it like does a produce a producer. great single barrel. That was if the only like craft producer that's backed by the largest distiller and also their their wallet, then yes, yeah. they're craft producer. I guess I'll tell you what though, that John J. Bowman that. is fucking good. It, it is. is good. It is. Yep. I, just wasn't a, I wasn't a Other fan than, of how like KG and sort of you know, the guy, the Bowman distiller guy when he was on the podcast, he just wouldn't answer a damn question straight. Yeah. NDAs have him. NDAs, yeah. They will get I mean, you. yeah, I yeah. get it, but like, eh, that's I don't frustrating. Know. I, feel, I feel like the guy was pretty forthright with what he could say. With what he could say, sure. <laughs> Which but wasn't it, much. It, it was pretty obvious that he had, <laughs> uh, you know, he, he was a mime you. in an invisible box. Well, his uh, his box let a lot more shit out than the uh, dude from 291 did. Well, 291's also not under an NDA. They just didn't want to disclose anything. He didn't want to talk about his mm -hmm. mash bill. He didn't want to talk about where his barrels came from, the size of the barrels, or anything no, else that they were doing. No, I don't age in one gallon barrels. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> right. <laughs> I made the barrel myself. Was that yeah. an episode? Because I haven't watched that. The no, 291 yeah. episode? Yeah, like, that's with... Uh, Last it's couple months, I think. Uh, yeah. yeah. It was about yeah two and a half months ago, I think. He came right... Almost right before the Bowman. Yep. Yeah, yeah, actually, they're pretty close. Maybe yeah, Bowman just... have palletized warehouses, don't they? Stack they do. They do vertical. Yeah. yeah. Yep. yep. It's all palletized. It's interesting. They're full I don't think it hurts what they're doing though. I mean, I've only had the single barrel, but I don't. No, think but I'd be really hurt. interested to to know what they what it would taste like if they had a regular Rick instead yeah. of palletized. I mean, because Virginia, you know, Fredericksburg weather is not that much different than Kentucky. Uh, it's you know we get the hot humid summers and the cold winters, you know it's it's that southeast you know type of weather and climate, uh, all four seasons, and so I'd love to know what you know John J Bowman would taste like if it wasn't palletized if they were ricking them and everything. It'd probably taste like Blanton's if they let it get to six years old. Well, the the John J is supposed to be around eight. I'd be surprised if it's eight. Do well, like Eight to twelve, right? On the podcast, he said it was. Yeah, he said it. He said it up, up towards nine, ten, twelve years old. I guess being that it is palletized, that that could be the difference. I yeah, uh, that may be. I mean, if they if they put it on Ricks, we may just it's be just not a, planes, so. Yeah, it's just not enough airflow. Or EH I think. single barrel or something. Yeah, I'm in the camp. Well, it's a different mash bill, though, right? No, that's the, uh, that's the whole no. point. You know. I forget which mash bill it is, but I think that the uh, logistical gains they get from palletizing far outweighs any maturation difference you'd see. That's probably right. They can cram a lot more barrels in their warehouses by yep. palletizing them. Or, I mean, you can move them easier, you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. But, yeah, I think uh, Bowman, I think the only bad Bowman I had was the gingerbread one. But, yeah, they did those in 375s. That was a limited Abraham Bowman release two three yeah. years ago. Um, Probably four now. And did they did a coffee one too? Yeah, they've done a, a coffee. They did a Merlot and Toriga. They've done uh, the Sweet Sixteen is phenomenal. It's unbelievable. Yeah, the um, only two I remember not liking were the uh, the gingerbread and the coffee. Everything else from them has been solid. All right, so what I'm going to do real quick here. Ginger? A chocolate ginger? Can you kindly piss off? <laughs> <laughs> I just remember I had I, I had one of those Bowman releases in a 375 that was chocolate. It was something chocolate. I can't remember what it was now. The the most popular ones have been the vanilla bean. Um, mm. The vel vanilla bean finished, or they aged it over vanilla beans. Uh, the Sweet 16, and then this most recent, the Twice Finished, where they aged it in uh, port and then Sauternes barrels. Is that the one that you sent me the sample of, Joel? The yeah, Twice Finished? One. 100, 100 proof. I need to try that again. 
All right. So listen, dudes, we've got a, a clear winner tonight. It's not Joel. Um, <laughs> we think the Evan Williams Arch. chicken barrel. The uh, I wonder. No, I'm not going to give the barrel number. Never mind. It's not going to make a difference because it's probably split up. It's in Maine. Oh. Nobody's going to go up there and get it. Well, we probably got no, like a third of the it. barrel. And I but, have no uh, shame in conceding that the single barrel was very good, and I'm happy to, uh, you know, rally around the rest of the crew. I know White Label will be there for me. Yeah, and it's <laughs> going to be the same every time you go get it. It's going to be good every time. I'm with you there. Um, I wanted to take a second and just thank all of you guys for coming in because I know that drinking whiskey with your buddies is difficult work and that we all you know, strive for perfection. Uh, I appreciate your time in that, especially Kendrick, who is, uh, you know, coming around the corner on his uh, upcoming nuptials and probably has other things he could be doing, like, I don't know, working through his guest list of 10 people that are allowed to show up and things of that nature. Yeah, I'm still trying to figure out if my mom's allowed to come or not. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. She'll be there. <laughs> That's a day of decision, if you ask me. <laughs> that that could be divisive for sure. So, uh, again, I just wanted to thank you guys for showing up. This has been uh, a little whiskey net production here. Good to get everybody together. And um, if you guys do, you want to do like a thing? Do you want to say a thing or do a word at people? For all seven of you that are on, you know where to find me. It's there we go. Great. We'll do this again. We'll keep doing it. I think I think there might be nine, but I appreciate every single one of you. And this is fun. We should uh, we should drink on camera more often. Yeah, yeah I enjoy the Agreed. drinking on camera with friends, and glad some people were able to join in on the chat. Yeah, honestly, this is the most social I felt in a while since probably the last time I was on one of these. So, uh, you know, it's really cool to uh, get to hang out with every one of you. And hey, we got to drink some Evan Williams. See, next time you never know what it could be. I'll drink to that. Jim Beam just dropped all that weird little craft stuff. You never know what we're going to get into. I have Bye. the bird dog collection if anyone's feeling random. Don't bring up bird we dog. Okay, we're going to talk, talk off camera about that in just a few Can minutes. we get ugly dog peanut butter whiskey, please? <laughs> I don't know what that is, and you're fired. So We're going to have to we're gonna have to. I fill, was never hired in the first place. <laughs> we're going to have to fill Jay in on bird dog. Off Your application the, off the is lost. Uh, all right. I'm going to hit the outro here. Uh, you guys stick around a we'll, We'll finish up the bird dog cat. <laughs> Thanks everybody for tuning in. I appreciate you guys checking it out.